Well, Dr. Isaac Sini is a historian at Dalhousie University in Canada and the author of Cuba, A Revolution in Motion. He's written extensively on Cuba and Africa, and he joins us now. Um, so there will be people watching who may find it hard to understand the outpouring of grief, really, that's come from African leaders, particularly Southern Africa. Um, can you explain that for us? Well, it's important to understand that Africa has occupied a very special place in the foreign policy. I mean, you could say the radical imagination of the Cuban Revolution, and particularly of Fidel Castro. Uh, when the Cuban Revolution tramped in 1959 with its goals of achieving national independence and social justice, it didn't see these goals, these ideals, as simply confined to the borders of uh, Cuba itself. But it basically was um, saw itself as part and parcel of not only a Latin American, but a third world struggle uh, for national liberation and social emancipation. And particularly Africa was seen as a place where Cuba held a historic debt. And so in the African national liberation, anti-colonial struggles, uh, Cuba has played an incredibly central role, particularly in Southern Africa uh, and in Angola, where when um, Angola achieved independence from Portugal, uh, we have a South African um, uh, invasion supported by the United States. And from 1975 uh, to 1991, uh, nearly 400,000 Cubans served as soldiers there to repel South African aggression, with the major battles taking place in 1988. So Cuba is seen as having made a decisive and dramatic contribution uh, to uh, African national colonial and, and national liberation struggles in general, but particularly in Angolan independence, Namibian independence, Independence and also bringing uh, apartheid uh, to an end in South Africa. And Mandela himself acknowledged this. Uh, Mandela, for example, said, um, you know, the Cuban people hold a special place in the hearts of the people of Africa. The Cuban internationalists have made a contribution to African independence, freedom and justice unparalleled for its principle and selfless character. And today, despite the fact that, you know, obviously the world's circumstances have changed, uh, there are thousands of Cuban doctors who are basically serving as um, frontline healthcare workers in so many African nations, bringing much needed healthcare to people who probably would never have received healthcare, plus the training and education of doctors in Cuba that then returned to Africa. He also identified as an African, not just as a, a Latin American. Why was that so important for people on the continent? Well, it, it was very important because um, in the 70s, uh, Fidel de, de, um, was the first Latin American to acknowledge the significant uh, role of Africa in the, in the history and in the makeup of a Latin American nation. He declared Cuba a Latin African nation. And there's this idea articulated by Fidel Castro and others in the Cuban revolutionary leadership that there was this historic debt owed to Africa because of the transatlantic slave trade. So one day was, this, of course, this support for national liberation, uh, anti-colonial struggles uh, for those who were engaged in sort of socialist projects, that's sort of like an ideological and political affinity. But beyond that, there's this deep historical tie to Africa and this idea that a historic debt must be paid. So, for example, this is something that has resonated throughout the Cuban Revolution. So, in um, when the Ebola epidemic hit West Africa, uh, Cuba was one of the first countries to basically respond. And at the UN Security Council, the Cuban ambassador said that there is a historic debt owed by Cuba uh, to Africa. And Fidel Castro was at the central of articulating that because of the transatlantic slave trade, the ravages of the transatlantic slave trade, the world um, owed that particular debt to Africa and Cuba would make its contribution, either through aiding these anti-colonial national liberation struggles, um, which happened in, this, um, you know, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, but also in our time, se um, I'm sending, as I said before, doctors and educators and then training Africans um, at, and Cuba and even setting up medical schools okay. in Africa okay. itself. Dr. Isaac Saini, we could keep talking for quite some time, but we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you for having me. The U.S. President-elect.